problem number 25, chapter 5 on the sex textbook. Let's do it. So this one says, imagine that you have a raindrop and there is no air, which would be kind of weird, but let's just say it. And it drops from a height of five kilometers. How fast would it be going? So this doesn't have anything to do with drag. Um, let's just do the problem. How fast and distance? Well, you could just use, and I'm going to use it, the kinematic equation looks like this. V squared, V zero squared, minus two G delta Y. That's that one kinematic equation that doesn't have time in it. I don't like that one, uh, but you, and you could derive it by using the average velocity and you get the same thing. So let's just use that because we don't really care about that problem. Well, let's just find the velocity if I start from rest at zero, but I notice that I still put it there. I still start with that basic equation, even though I know that's zero. And that's the way you should do it because I can then say, oh, V zero equals zero. Instead of just skipping that part, don't skip that part. So if I want to find V, it's going to be equal to, yeah, the delta Y is negative five kilometers, right? Because it went down. Because it's going to get, otherwise you get that square root of a negative number. So I'm going to get the square root of two, negative two times 9.8, that's constant. And then the change in Y is going to be negative five, it's going down. So negative 5,000 meters. And you have to put that in meters because that's in newtons per kilo, uh, kilogram, which has a meters in there too. So that's fine. I can do that. That's not really the important part of the problem. It's just used for comparison. Now let's go ahead and put it in our calculator on drop, 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 uh, two, the negative and the negative, cancel. So I get two, 9.8, 5,000 times, so that's 500 square root, 313 meters per second. Notice that the speed of sound is 340 meters per second. So that's really fast. Okay, so now for part B, imagine that there is air and the diameter of the, of the drop is four millimeters. I looked this up, they didn't give it to the problem. Let's say the drag coefficient is 0.47. I think that's good for a sphere. But I'll tell you, raindrops are not raindrop shaped. Okay. Let me just, as a side, you know, if you have a raindrop, that's not the, what it looks like. It doesn't look like this. It turns out that, mo depending on the size, but a lot of times they actually end up looking like this. That's a raindrop. I know, it's weird. Stuff gets weird. But let's just assume it's a sphere. It's fine. So if I have a sphere and I want to find the terminal velocity, uh, then I'm gonna let it fall until the downward gravitational force, mg, is equal to the upward drag force, fd. Now I do need to find both of those things, right? Because the mass depends on the density and the volume. So let's go ahead and find the volume. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And so if this is the diameter, then r is equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. We're going to need that. Okay. But that's how I find the volume of a sphere. And we'll put the numbers in at the end. So then the mass is going to be, the density is mass over volume, so the mass is going to be density times volume. So it's going to be the density times the volume, which is the density times 4 thirds pi r cubed, and that's g. And the drag force looks like this. The magnitude is one half rho. Now, this is rho water. This is rho air. Uh, one half rho a c v squared. And we want to solve for that. So at terminal velocity, these two are equal. So I can set this equal to mg, and I get the following. I, I, I poorly managed my space here, that's fine. So I have one half rho air, that's a rho, uh, A C V squared equals rho water four thirds pi r cubed. Now that V is the velocity, but I'm gonna go ahead and put in my expression for the area. So if I have a sphere, the area of that sphere looks like a circle. So the area is pi r squared, right? Because it's the cross-sectional area coming towards you. So I get one half rho a pi 
r squared c v squared equals rho water four thirds pi r cubed. Aha, the pi's cancel. R squared divided both sides by R squared, and I get this R over there. That's pretty important. Now let's solve for V, multiply by two, divide by the density, divide by that. V squared is gonna be two rho W four thirds R over rho air times C, the drag coefficient. And then I can find the velocity by taking the square root. So V is gonna be the square root two rho W for water, four thirds R over rho air C. Now, I do, before I put my numbers in, I wanna show you something really important. What if I make the drop bigger? What if I double the size of the drop? Well, what's gonna happen is that I'm going to increase the mass. If I double the radius, I'm gonna increase the mass by a factor of eight, right? But I'm gonna increase the drag force, which depends on the area, by a factor of four. So I'm gonna increase the weight much more than I increase the drag force, so it actually have a larger terminal velocity. Bigger things have larger terminal velocities, and that's really the important part here. And the same thing could be true for hail, right? When you have hail falling, big hail ends up going a lot faster and is heavier, so it's like a double whammy. Let's put in our numbers. Square root of two, the density of water is one times 10 to the third. Remember, that's kilograms per cubic meter. It's 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Um, it's not one, you, you can't put one gram per cubic centimeter. And then I have four thirds, and then I have R, which is two times 10 to the negative third, but you'll notice there, 10 to the third and 10 to the negative third. And then I have the density of air is 1.2. And then uh, C is 0 0.47. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel those two just to make things easier. Now I can put it in my calculator and I get two times four, duh, times two divided by three. And then I'm gonna divide by 1.2 and 0.47, and then take the square root. I get 3.07. Remember the other velocity was 313. So it goes a lot slower with air, with air resistance than it was falling uh, without air resistance the whole way. It's a fun problem, I like it. So again, we can deal with these non-constant forces only in situations where the velocity doesn't change because then it's a constant force and we can, we can say the acceleration is zero uh, and the net force has to be equal to zero. But if it's falling and you're looking at how it changes speed, that's a much more difficult problem and way more interesting. And I will solve that if I have chocolate with me. Look at that. Okay, the end.